Hey moms, this is Dr. Scott Haggerty back with Substances to Avoid or Minimize During Pregnancy Part 2. And in this one, we are going to dive really deep into some really heavy content. Make sure you've got a notepad, make sure you're taking notes. So and if you have questions, make sure to drop them in the comments box wherever you're consuming this content and we'll make sure to address those as we go through. This free masterclass is brought to you by Elite Family Chiropractic and Healthy You in partnership with bringing you the best information in health to improve the quality of life for your family, both locally here in our community and around the world. One of the questions that we are commonly asked is, is fish safe to consume during pregnancy? And the answer is maybe. You see, let's start by talking about fish, right? It's an excellent source of protein, iodine, vitamin B, as well as minerals and omega-3 fatty acids. All fish contain some levels of mercury, but certain fish contain much higher level of mercury than others. And studies have shown that mercury readily passes through the placenta to the fetus. This is why this becomes so concerning. There are a number of fish that have been shown to be very high in mercury. Fish such as swordfish, broadbill, and marlin all tend to be very high. Other common ocean fish such as shark, orange roughy, catfish, bluefish, king mackerel, and tilefish also tend to be very high as well as oysters, clams, and mussels. As well as high in mercury, they also tend to be very high in pesticides. The FDA has pretty strict requirements when it comes to mercury exposure, recommending that you limit albacore tuna to no more than once per week, as well as limiting exposure to low mercury fish, such as light tuna, shrimp, salmon, pollock, and others to no more than 12 ounces per week. As a side note, we are also exposed to mercury in many of the household items that we'll discuss later on in this video. Farm-raised fish are something you must be especially cautious about during your pregnancy because they may be a source of antibiotics, vaccines, colorings, and pesticides. This is a very, very common problem. One of the interesting points is farm-raised salmon are fed more antibiotics per kilogram than any other animal, period. Many farm salmon and trout farms use antibiotics, vaccines, hormones, pesticides, and fungicides in the raising of the fish. Wild salmon have a natural pink pigment, pigment while farm raised tend to have more of a gray pigment. So on in the farm raised, they actually have to use a compound called, called astaxanthin that's added into the feed to give them that natural color. In the wild, they accumulate this naturally because they, you know, they consume the astaxanthin in their normal feeding cycles. So it's obviously much better to go and get it in any natural way versus the farm raised way. Most canned fish fall into the category of must avoid because the liner of the cans contains a compound called bisphenol A, as well as other nasty additives. BPA is frequently used as the liner of tin cans that contain fish. They also commonly contain sulfur dioxide and sodium and potassium sulfites, as well as calcium disodium, also known as EDTA. So top fish recommendations are to buy organic fish, and by canned fish that do not use BPA liners. If you have a family history of certain types of allergies, it's highly recommended to avoid potential allergens during the pregnancy because this can help you to avoid sensitization of your infant's immune system while you're pregnant. Especially important is reducing allergens in the environment and diet, especially during the last three months of your pregnancy. One way to approach this is by reaching out to a functional medicine doctor and having them perform food sensitivity and allergy testing. So this type of testing is far more in depth than what you would get from a standard lab test from an allergist because it looks at sensitivities and allergy responses. And this is a great way to know in depth foods that are likely to trigger an immune response within you. If you have questions, drop that in the comments below. We can give you more details or help you to go and find people who can help you with this. One of the most important things that you can do overall for your health is avoiding trans fatty acids. These are the most harmful fats that you can ever put into your body. And they go under a lot of mysterious labels like hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated vegetable oils or vegetable shortening. They're commonly used as a preservative because they do things like give crackers their crispiness and provide moistness or buttery texture to cake. Fortunately, trans fats are nearly everywhere in processed foods and there is no safe level of these fats. They are a major contributing factor to heart disease, cancer, skin diseases, diabetes, atherosclerosis, and so much more. Trans fatty acids interfere with the body's natural ability to absorb and utilize good fats. During pregnancy, your baby's developing brain requires high amounts of essential fatty acids such as omega-3s. They are absolutely essential for the developing brain and nervous system. Trans fatty acids, on the other hand, can make cell walls become rigid and inflexible, which causes nerves to have difficulty passing information from one nerve to the next. This is a major, major potential risk. Here is a list of conditions that are associated with the excessive consumption of trans fatty acids. Severe symptoms of PMS, endometriosis, PCOS, fibroids, 
low libido, insulin resistance, potentially le leading to diabetes, as well as heart disease and many other conditions. Trans fatty acids actually impede insulin's ability to bind to your cell to absorb sugar. And so what ends up happening then is that the insulin stays circulating in the bloodstream longer than it should and it results in a quicker return to being hungry and a greater likelihood that you will overeat. This cycle then tends to lead to more and more issues with inability to properly metabolize carbohydrates leading to eventually obesity. Unfortunately, many favorite foods that our kids eat tend to be loaded with uh, trans fatty acids. So let's go through and break down a list of common foods so we know, number one, what to look for and what foods we probably need to avoid during pregnancy and even when our kids are young. Foods such as french fries, chips, crackers, cookies, biscuits, cakes, cereal, and margarine all tend to be dense in these foods because they are incremental in the baking process and they're also major league flavor enhancers. So for things like french fries, right, they, they are what they are cooked in, they give them a lot of their crunchiness. Same thing with a lot of your chips, crackers, and things like that. So they're everywhere. And things that we really must make sure that we avoid. This concludes part two of substances to avoid or minimize during pregnancy. Make sure to tune in for part three in two weeks. We'll have tons more awesome content to make sure that you and your baby achieve optimal health. Let's talk about some of the topics that we're gonna discuss. Plastic drinking bottles, the dangers of soft drinks, why you need to minimize quinine exposure, the dangers of artificial sweeteners, why you need to minimize or avoid high fructose corn syrup, the danger of excessive caffeine consumption, toxins present in personal care products that you don't know about, toxins that are present in your cleaning product, the danger of alcohol consumption during pregnancy, the dangers of cigarette smoking and being around secondhand cigarette smoke during pregnancy, the danger that drugs have to you and to your baby, concerns surrounding exposure to ultrasounds during your pregnancy, why you need to eliminate radiation exposure during your pregnancy, as well as tips to reduce toxic load in your home and in your environment. Make sure to give this video a like to let us know that this video is valuable to you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell wherever you're consuming this content. And thanks again for watching this video from Healthy You and Elite Family Chiropractic. This is Dr. Scott Haggerty and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.